find it, and I'm finding it more comforting uh, and more reassuring knowing that God is in control of everything that's happening, right? Because it doesn't mean that we won't experience adversity. It doesn't mean that we won't go through hard times, but it's an assurance that God is in control of everything that's happening. And it, and it should make a difference. It should make a difference when you conceptualize the fact that God sees it, he knows it, and he's in control of it, which means it's going to end the way it's supposed to. You understand? You may not be where you want to or may not be going through what you wish you were or, 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 or vice versa, but your story is always going to end the way it is supposed to. And so, um, we're going to look today at Job uh, chapter 1. You know, and, and oftentimes when we talk about Job in the context of the season of his life where he went through astronomical adversity at the hands of the enemy, uh, a lot of times we, we conclude that this was God's attempt to bless Job beyond where he was already blessed. Because when we get to the end of the story, we see that happening. So we conclude maybe God had allowed Job to endure some of the most grueling hardships um, just so he could bless him more. I want to submit to you this morning that I think there may be another reason for this. You know, because when we look at the story of Job, we understand he was already the wealthiest person in the land that he lived. Now, while we understand, and I want to be clear about this, while we understand, God can and will replace whatever the devil takes from you. Mm -hmm. Like, God can give you back more than the devil can take from you. That's not the issue. But that's not the only way God has to bless us. So, you know, the mission of the adversary, the mission of our enemy, ultimately is to disrupt our relationship with God. I want you to hear that real clear. The mission of our adversary is to disrupt our relationship with God the Father. Why? Because he wants to jeopardize our salvation. Right? That's the only reason the devil fights believers so hard. He wants to create a wedge between us and God. He's hoping that because of our separation from God, or as we disconnect from God, we'll risk our own salvation. That's the objective. And, and, and the opposite can be said as it relates to God, right? The mission of God is to have a relationship with his children. That's why he sent Jesus to die for us, right? So that we can be reconciled or our account or the sin that separates us can be wiped away so that not that we do, so that we can have a better relationship with him or a relationship with him. God wants to be in a relationship with his children. God wants to be in a relationship with his children. He wants that more than anything. He wants to be in a relationship with his children. And he wants us free from the sin that separates that relationship. So I want to point out some things to you that you know, Job chapter 1, verse 1, but I want you to look at them in a slightly different way. Because there's an interesting exchange that happens between God and the accuser or the adversary. And I want you to see this morning that Job's trials were not a result of God wanting to bless him greater than he was already blessed. But I want to submit to you 
that Job's situation was a result of the proud father showing off his son. All right. The proud father. This Job got caught up in God being proud of him. Yeah. I want you to see it this morning. Job was the result of a righteous relationship with God, and God adored it. He loved it. The one thing I found solace in is my father passed was, my father loved me. It's not something I always knew because I didn't grow up with him. But there was something about his face that lit up when I came around. There was something about the way he said my son when he addressed me. And even in the hospital, when people were coming in and he didn't know them, every time he was asked, who is that? He said, that's my son, Raymond. And he was proud of me. The last coherent conversation I had with him, my wife was present, and he, he, he said, I just want to see you preach. I just want to see you preach. And all he talked about was preach the word. Preach the word. Study the word, son. Preach the word. Study the word. And he was proud. And I want to suggest to you today that God was showing off the son that he was proud of. Job was already wealthy. God didn't need to allow Satan to strip him of everything he had to give him more. He could have just given him more. Job didn't ask for more. Job didn't even want more. But I want you to see just what God thought about his son. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright. Blameless and upright. Blameless and upright. He, he was one who feared God, which in this reference means obey and shun evil. He feared God, which means obey, and shunned, which means turned away from evil. He was blameless and upright. He obeyed God, and he resisted evil. Oh, did you hear these characteristics? All right. And, and, and he had seven sons and three daughters were born to him. And, and also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, uh, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. In case you didn't realize, he was already blessed. All right. And his sons would go out and feast in the houses, each one uh, on his appointed day, and, and, and would sin and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. They were party. Mm -hmm. That's what that's all. They were party. Mm -hmm. So it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would sin and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning to offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, Job did regularly. So wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So he was blameless and upright. So he was righteous. He obeyed God. He resisted evil. And this man went so far as to cover his children. When his children would go out drinking and partying, and doing all kinds of stuff. Job would take it upon himself to offer sacrifice to God on behalf of his children in the event that they did wrong in the sight of God. Job was the guy. All right. Job was that guy. And he wasn't that guy because he was wealthy. He was that guy because he was righteous. He was in a great space with God in terms of their relationship. All right, move on. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And if you don't think 
The devil will come to church. You don't know nothing. Because if he presents himself before the Lord, he'll present himself before the church. And so there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Now, I want you to see this thing like you've never seen it before. Satan comes to present himself before the Lord with the counsel, if you will, of, 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 of heavenly beings. And the Lord initiates the exchange with the devil. See, sometimes it's okay to get off first. See, we can't just run to the word when we get hit with adversity. Mm -hmm. Or we can't just go into prayer when something breaks down. Mm -hmm. Or we can't just decide we're going to fast when our ends don't meet. Mm -hmm. We got to be smart enough to know every time I raise my voice to worship, I'm doing damage to the kingdom of the devil. Mm -hmm. Every time I lift my hands to God, I'm doing damage to the kingdom of darkness. Right. Right. See? See? And you got to understand the power that you have and the damage that you inflict. So the Lord said to Satan, because God is in control, and he's a bad, bad man. He said to Satan, where do you come from? As if he didn't know. Well, you know, let's play the game. Where do you come from? And Satan said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it, just prowling around, just like a snake, just looking, just looking for somebody to take out, looking for somebody to disconnect from the Father. Then the Lord said, not, to, not Satan, the Lord initiates the exchange. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So you've been just going back and forth in the earth, huh? Just roaming around. And we, we know what your purpose is, right? Steal, kill, and destroy. And, and that launched against some <coughs> believers. Because you're the king of all haters. So the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? Now, I want you to watch the words that come next because we started out hearing uh, Job, about Job's characteristics. Now, God himself described Job to the saint. And I want you to see the swelling of the chest of the proud father who says, you've been looking for somebody to pick on? You've been looking for somebody to mess with? You ever look for somebody to disconnect from me? I got a son down there who you don't want down there. All right, all right. I got a son down there who's righteous. He's blameless. He obeys me, and he resists evil. Even when his children sin, he offers sacrifices. That boy loves his dad. So while you're around there looking for people, did you miss him? God wasn't sticking the devil on Job. God was bragging on Job to the devil. You want to try somebody? Have you seen this one? Have you seen my boy down there in the land of us being a perfect God-like example to his children? Being a perfect Christ-like example to his community? Man, have you seen it? Watch what God goes on to say. He says, my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth. He says, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? That's like standing in the sand, stand, and watching your son throw the winning touchdown. 
And everybody knows that's your boy. I'm watching your daughter be the first African American girl to win the international spelling bee, and you like, that's my baby. <laughs> Y'all like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God said, and nobody on earth like Job. And when we talk about Job, we never really distinguish that characteristic that even God the Father uses to describe him. We say he's rich, we say he caught hell, and God restored him. But we never say, you're talking about a man after God's own heart? This man had a relationship with God like nobody because God said so. God goes on to describe him as he's blameless and upright. He fears God and shuns evil. Now we know we will never achieve perfection. But just to know that God is proud of me, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. All right, go on. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So God says, that's my boy. And you know, just like when, when you understand and you watch your son throw the winning touchdown, there's always some hater who says, that's because the defense sucks. Mm -hmm. That's because the quarterback sucks. So Satan's immediate response, I want you to get this, his immediate response to God's showing off of his son is this. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear you for nothing? Does he obey you for nothing? What he's saying is, I think there's another reason. I don't think Job is righteous just because he loves you. Satan says, have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? Now, I want to say this to you right here and right now, because see this change. Mm -hmm. And just like I learned when I was applying for my administrator's license, make sure you give God the glory. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You cannot be the only one who does not know God is the reason for all the good things you have. Mr. Petty often says when we pray, sir, we couldn't greet, we, we, the cause we have is because of God. The house we live in is because of God. Satan says, you know what? Job don't love you. Job, Job like you because you, you blessed him. Everything he got, he's got because of you. So he just stayed in a relationship with you because he don't want to lose what he got. That's what he said. He said, he don't obey you for nothing. He's obeying you because look at what you've done for him. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. Satan knows God is reason for all the good things we have. That's why he's so mad at us. And he's going to do the job same thing he tries to do to us. Oh, yes. But now he says, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. So the devil is so slick. He said, wait a minute, don't, don't, don't show off your son to me, because I'm not impressed. Hmm. I think the only reason the cat is involved with you the way he is is because you blessed him like you are. I go, I go one step further. I guarantee you, if you took all that stuff away from him, he would turn away from you. And if you don't think, if you don't think that's exactly what he's trying to do to you, then just take a look around at your own life sometime. And see why things are going the way they're going. And notice, as I'm going to show you, it's not God doing it. It's God allowing it. God doesn't cause bad things to happen, but he will allow them to happen. 
And this was not to teach a lesson. This was not to, to, to make Job more mature. And this was not to bless him. This was because God was so proud of his son that he says, you know what? If you want to try somebody, try him. Don't always look for the weak link in the chain. Mm -hmm. Don't always try to break in the side door. Come through the front if you want it. All right, all right. And I was going to basically have a saying, if you want some, you got to bring some. And the Lord said to Satan, and the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person or his life. So Satan went out for the presence of the Lord. Now, this shows us one thing right out of the gate. So God allowed the adversity to occur because he believed that the lack of material possessions was not going to separate him from Job. Yes. He was confident that his relationship with Job was rock solid. We call it A1 from day one. <laughs> you know, the people who with you no matter what. Uh -huh. Yeah, you made a mistake, but I'm still with you. Yeah, you dropped the ball, but I'm still with you. Yeah, I don't even believe, I don't even see the vision no more, but I believe in you and I'm still with you. Mm -hmm. God was so confident that Job's relationship was based on Job's desire to be righteous that he said, you can have at all he had, but you cannot touch his life, which meant God's power is still the ultimate power. See, that's where we find hope. So whatever Satan is doing to you or whatever he is blocking from you or whatever is going on in your life from an adversity standpoint, know that God is in control of it because the devil can only do what God allows him to do. Amen. He said, you can, you can have the stuff, mm -hmm. but you can't have Job. And so sometimes God allows us because he is so convinced. Imagine that for a concept. We spend our whole life, or most of our Christian life, trying to be righteous. What if we actually were? Well, we actually are. It's a gift. You just have to receive it. But what if God honored our righteousness by saying, you know what? Instead of picking on the baby saint, why don't you pick on this one? All right. Instead of, instead of picking on a Christian who don't understand the word yet, why don't you try this one who always in it? Instead of always messing with the ones who only come to me when you mess with them, how about messing with these who fast every week, who tithe every time they take something in, who forgive every time they've been hurt, who loves everybody who doesn't love them? Why don't you try dumb with them sometime? Because I believe they might ride or die. They might A1. They ain't leaving me no matter what. Even when times get tough, they still call out to me. They still got their hands lifted and their voices raised up. And they still giving me glory. Even though they're in the pits of what is presumably their hell on earth, they still lift my name up. They ain't going nowhere. And so if you want to pick on somebody, pick on them. And I want to suggest to you today that God was so proud of his son that he said to Satan check this cat out Amen. so if you see kids do something that you you know they weren't sure they could do but but they achieved it and you're like man look at that untapped potential and it gives you that sense of pride So, God displays his control over this situation by setting limitations on what the devil could or couldn't do. All right. Now, what if you take that away from this church today? Mm -hmm. What if you leave him here thinking no matter what it is, God has already set the boundary? So, when we say, God will put more on you you can bear, you don't have to look to find that verbatim. You can just look right here in Job. Because God sets the boundaries that Satan is even allowed to test you. Because he knows 
how much you can withstand. All right, let's prove it, because most of you know how the story ends. Most of you even know the middle of it. Most of you don't maybe know the middle of it, you know how it ends. Was, was, was God, did God gamble pay off? Of course it did. Amen. 41 chapters later, Job has to pray for his friend who put their two cents in to what was going on between him and his father. And God said, because of the words you've spoken inaccurately regarding me, the only thing that's going to save you from my wrath is for Job to pray for you. Because I was with Job the whole time. I was with Job the whole time. I never left Job. I was with him the whole time. So yeah, God is a rewarder of faithfulness. Right? He did reward Job's faithfulness. We know the latter part of his life, he had twice as much as he had in the beginning. So if he was already the richest man in the land of us, he surpassed that. But his wealth was not about him. His wealth was, was a result of his faithfulness to God. Amen. Because even when he had nothing, he was faithful to God. Even when he decided to curse his own birth. Even when he wished he had never been born. He also said, let me examine my life to see if I'm reaping something and I sow. Hmm. I'm trying to show you the balance here. Because sometimes we get weak. Mm -hmm. Job said, I just want to blot out the day I was born from history. Mm -hmm. But let me just go back and look at my life and see if I sold something and I'm reaping a harvest for. If I did some injustice or showed some unkindness to somebody that I'm just paying for. Because he was what? Righteous. And even though sometimes he went through some, some issues within himself because of what he was going through, the Bible says he never charged God with any wrong. All right, come on. Even when his wife said, give up. Ooh, ooh. That's tough. Man, God will let you down. Might as well cut him off. Job stuck in there. And God's assumption about the essence of his relationship with Job was true. It was spot on. It was validated. Because Job proved he was consistent with God whether he was based or back, whether he was well fed or hungry, whether he was in need or had plenty. Ooh, sound like a Paul to me. All right, all right. And sometimes some of us just love God no matter what. Amen. And, and nothing can be done about it. Amen. Amen. My stepdad used to sing a song, the only good thing he ever did, he used to sing a song that says, I just love the Lord and I don't care what people may say. I just love the Lord. I'm going to serve him any old way. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Almost level to the ground. I just love the Lord. What is God saying about your relationship? Right. Let me help you with that. I know you make mistakes. I make mistakes. I know sometimes we fall short. I love that song. I might not get it right sometimes, but I love you. Oh, yeah. I may slip up and fall sometimes, but I love you. Mm -hmm. I think the wrong thing sometimes, but I love you. Right? But where's your heart? Do you do what you do because you consistently do it because you love God? Because you're thankful? Because you're grateful? Because you appreciate what he did for you? Or you do it just because you're a Christian? God, it's only once a week now. Wow. Oh my God, it's only 10%. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it ain't going to kill me to say nice things to him. Was it all about him? Proud father. Mm -hmm. Proud father. All right. 
I just that's all I want now. I I, I I'm, I'm stuck. I just I just want God to look at me and say, that's my that's my that's my boy. That's my guy right there, man. He he yeah. He represents. He's down to represent the kingdom. You should want the same thing. All right, let's go. Amen. And you can have the same thing. Amen.